But we're already talking MVPs. Who could win it this year? Who's a dark horse? Who do you like? Howard, set him up, my man. The calm before the storm that we call the Padres. A little NL West battle brewing. And this is going to be one heck of a storm, isn't it? I mean, you think back to last year, how crazy it was. It is a monsoon coming here to San Diego. Our Padres are enjoying a much-deserved day off after starting the season with 14 straight games. But tomorrow, the evil empire, sorry, I said that wrong. The Dodgers are coming to town. That's right, the Dodgers are coming for a three-game series. Petco Park, without question, will be rocking. Jake, when I think of this story, it's something movies are made out of. It's exactly something movies are made out of, and I, and I can't wait to get to that, but I do want to set the scene a little bit because people are going Super Bowl, SoFi Stadium, and uh, this is a big field, right? Well, here's the kicker, okay? The Rams actually practice north of L.A. in Thousand Oaks, California, at a small private Division three school called Cal Lutheran University. That is where the Rams were today, and that's where I got the chance to catch up with former San Diego Charger Eric Weddle. Eric obviously loved in San Diego. Remember, the NFL had to take a year off, COVID, right? That's right. So they did not go to London last mm -hmm. year. And guess what? The NFL is trying to sell their product. They're trying to get all these fans <laughs> fired up. And they give them the high-powered game of the Jets and Falcons. What are we doing, NFL? I mean, are you kidding me? Two one in three teams? Imagine you get the year off. All these people in London excited. What are we going to get? We're going to get Rodgers and Brady. We're going to get Russell Wilson. The NFL says, eh, hang on. Can I interest you in Zach Wilson and Matt Ryan? Ugh. Marcella, you would think that it's opening day here in San Diego, the way these fans have showed up. In fact, I'm going to ask you and the folks at home and my awesome photographer, Mario, to take a walk with me. There is a line that goes absolutely all the way around Petco Park because fans have come out in droves just to watch the game at the park at the park, Gallagher Square. Everybody is fired up here. We caught up with some of those fans, and this is what they had to say. Look, I get it. I get it. There are 148 games left in the regular season. This is just game 15, right? No big deal taking on the Dodgers. It's too early to matter. Let's not make this into more than what it is. That's what everybody says. The media blows these things out of proportion. It's just another game. Well, for me, I think that's BS. This is a big series. Just because it's early in the year means nothing. The Dodgers have beat up on San Diego for a long time now. And last year, we got our first taste in a while of what it's like to no longer play second fiddle. And I want that back. And I know this Friars team wants it back, too. Happy Friday night. You made it to the weekend. Good on you. And look, I know Aztec fans are disappointed, and everyone's bracket is pretty much useless after a team called the Peacocks took down Kentucky. But hey, let's just enjoy basketball, why don't we? The round of 64 wrapped up today out to Viejas Arena, where number one seeded Arizona was taking on Wright State. Wildcats showing off on defense. Dalen Terry picks off the pass and puts on a show. Popcorn optional. The two-handed flush, and Arizona has a 13-point lead. Well, Carlo, Heather, these fans and players have been partying for three Three or four days now, and the celebrations culminated here today with the parade and rally down Figueroa Street in Los Angeles to the LA Coliseum. And I can speak on experience, there was a lot of fans out here. It took my photog Brian White and I about an hour and 45 minutes to find parking, another 25 minute walk just to get to the rally. When we finally got here, we caught up with a couple of the thousands and thousands of Rams fans celebrating this Super Bowl championship. I live for this day every year. Come I, on. I think a lot of people live for this day. There's 162 games in a baseball season, but one is really extra special, and that's every team's home opener. There's an extra buzz in the air. You can feel it from the fans, and this one's super special because last year it was limited capacity. Yeah. We're going to pack this place today, and you can feel it out here. It's awesome, John. She scored the final 15 points of the game. Guess there's no shake line in that game. No, she <laughs> says, I'm out. That's oh, us sorry. right out of this building right now, isn't it? I mean, I'm with Destiny. We out. Let's go. Scott. See you, Jesse. Uh, what a great Friday night for our Padres at home. Yeah, it's not always easy, but this team, Jake, just keeps on going and finding a way to win. It's amazing, too, because they got like two guys hitting. Exactly. And yet they keep winning and keep winning. And yes, Marcella, this is how we want to start a weekend. This is our how we do it. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> our Padres had a chance to pull. I didn't even know my mic was still on. What? 
Our Padres had a chance to pull even with the Los Angeles Dodgers at the top of the NOS. A win tonight over Miami and the Friars would be sharing first place with the boys in blue. Things looking good early and mama, there goes that man again. Eric Hosmer turns on a 99 mile per hour pitch and puts it into the right center gap with two outs. Manny Machado motors home all the way from first and the Friars lead one to nothing in the welcome frame. Hosmer's hitting 371 in the fifth. Matt Beatty makes an impact here for the brown and gold. He smokes one into the right field corner. Padres take a 2 nothing lead. Nobody in baseball is hotter than Manny Machado. Two outs still in the fifth. He lines one to left field for an RBI single. His 21st ribby on the year. It's 3 nothing San Diego. A really solid night for you, Darvish, except for this one pitch. Jesus Aguilar barrels this one up for a monster blast. A two-run no-doubter. Darvish went seven innings, though. Gave up just five hits. Taylor Rogers not available tonight, so in comes Steven Wilson for the save. It didn't come easy. Couple of fish on the corner. Corners with two out, but he gets the job done getting Jesus Sanchez to pop out. Padres take the first two over the Marlins, three to two. Your final tonight. The Friars are tied atop the NL West. It's okay. supposed to pick up the pace and stop the Astros from winning World Series. Oh, did I say that wrong? <laughs> I mean, Obviously, spent 12 seasons in Detroit and then wins a title in his first year with the Rams. Not sure what that says about the Lions, but that's beyond <laughs> the point. He's got a lot more weapons here in LA, especially one that happened to be the Super Bowl MVP. Come on now, baby. What's the word we're looking? for today, fellas. Uh, winning, streaking, surging, baby. Oh, We're surging. surging. Okay. Teams that are moving in the right direction. Come on, let's go. Camera switch. Chris Porco, let's do it, baby. The first team surging, the New England Patriots. Remember last week I said Bill Belichick should probably win Coach of the Year? That's because they are... Surging. Surging. Let's go. They started the year just one in three. Today they won their sixth straight game with a dominating 36-13 win over the Titans. The last time they won six straight, back in 2019, guess who their quarterback was? The greatest person to ever play the game, Tom Brady. Now they're doing it with a rookie quarterback, and they're back on top of the AFC East. Oh, they're so comfortable there. Speaking of the AFC East, their foe, here's a team people may not even believe are surging, but how about the Finns? Miami looking good. They started the year one and seven to a tongue of Iloa. I gotta give a shout out to my photographer real quick, Scott Hall, who is full <laughs> spread eagle right now to get you this shot, so you guys better enjoy it. Uh, let's talk a little baseball. Let's talk a little baseball real quick, because I Helps Scott Hall up. Hey, this is special, right? Last year, the home opener was limited capacity. We didn't get to have all these fans in. They did the reopening day against Cincinnati, but this is a true home opener. Jake, another great day on the course. Marcella, another brutal assignment for me out here at this beautiful golf course, but I think I'll make do. Uh, let's talk about some golf. Today was doomsday, cut day, right? A little over half the field staying here. The other half headed to the beach early. Now, the group I was following all day was kind of the super group. Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, and they went out and they played really, really well on that north course. Two of them, John Rahm and Justin Thomas, are now tied for the lead at 13 under with Adam Shank. And I caught up with Justin Thomas, I had to ask him, I said, does it help when you're playing in a group that is just red hot? And all he could really say was, it doesn't hurt. John, the wind is whipping. We are in the middle of the course right now. This event runs Friday through Sunday. It is the second stop of five in the National Regatta Sailing Series. So what could be better than a beautiful day here in America's finest city? Meaning tonight's showdown between the Nuggets and Warriors was an absolute must win for Denver unless they wanted to rewrite the record books. Already trailing two games in the opening round of Golden State, but good lord look at Aaron Gordon fly. A one-handed slam, a jamma. Sadly for the Nuggets, the chef was cooking at altitude tonight. Steph Curry pulls up and knocks down the triple. He had 27. Now the possible back-to-back -back MVP, Nikola Jokic, is as smooth as butter. He gets the tough lay-in to go, and Denver has a late lead, but guess who plays hard? Heartbreaker in the Mile High City. Curry cruises down the lane for a rim roller and the deuce. Golden State wins 118-113. The Warriors take a 3-0 series lead, and my Nuggets are in deep trouble. We sent two of the more entertaining San Diegans to the Super Bowl to get a feel for the vibe and atmosphere up in L.A. Greaves and Gariani on the road to the Super Bowl. Marcus Greaves and Jake Gariani. There they are. Gentlemen, has the first day been what you expected and hoped for? Thanks for putting all the pressure on us, Howard, to make sure this is one entertaining live shot. Jeez, it's been awesome. I mean, it's been better than expected so far. At least that's the way I feel about this. Let's start on the hardwood where the Lakers were in search of back-to-back -back wins for the first time in over a month. 
But to do so, they're going to have to take down the defending NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks to Crypto.com Arena. That still sounds weird. Lakers are going to turn it over in the first quarter. Pat Connington scoops it up, and he's going to take it coast to coast for the one-handed hammer. L.A. gave up 78 points in the first half. In the second half, more Milwaukee two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo throws down the alley slam.